Who's got access to one man's collection that grew so big, it's now a major tourist attraction? They're travelling from Condidno to Exmouth in Devon. We're off to see uh, Nigel and James at the Museum of Country Life. Um, this one looks like a good one. As with any museum that we go to, there is always about 30% of what they have in stock shoved behind the scenes, in barns, unrestored. That's why these places are always good for us. We always do well in the museum. They're quite good days out as well. They are. The pretty town of Axmouth was Devon's very first seaside resort. Along the coast, the world of country life is a visitor attraction established in the 1970s by farmer John Lee. Though it's grown to include playgrounds and animal attractions, it started life as John's personal collection, driven by his passion for farm machinery and vehicles. Until it got so large, he transformed it into a museum in 1978. Today, it's curated by John's son, Nigel, and manager, James Turner. The collection started in early 60s father used to go to local farm sales and see machinery that he'd probably sat on as a young child and he thought well it's a shame to let it go to the scrap man there are so many interesting things so many bits and pieces not just on display but in storage that we don't have room to have on display i'd imagine there's a few bits and pieces that would be a bit of a surprise hello hi drew it's nigel how are you very good. Hello, Hi, T. Hi, Hi, yeah. How are we doing? Cool. Well, this looks good. Fantastic. Yeah, this we've is got a good a, start. It, yes. Yeah, very good. None got... for sale. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find something for you to buy. Come on in. Can we go and have a look, yeah? Cheers. First stop is the collection of farm machinery. Nigel and James are hitting it off with straight away. Good guys, and Nigel's a farmer's son, and I've dealt with a few of them. Farmer's sons, like Nigel's, are absolute buggers to deal with. They know the value of everything. They don't want to let anything go. They're really good at haggling. Oh, yeah, they're tricky. Up over the top here, this is like our, a store of excess. That's excess. Uh, on this bit. Is that excess? Which bit? That one. The carriage. Well, the carriage. Is not really, what, no. Re not really doesn't, not... Mean, doesn't mean no, does it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But, no, we've got some other stuff that James is more than happy for you to have a look at. Yeah? It's not on display. Where's that? Um, just up here. Can we have a Follow look? Follow me, yeah. yeah. All right, so what we've got up here, then? All sorts of everything. Yeah, bits of, yeah, odds and sods. But possibly for sale. Drew's beginning to realise that the collection could produce an extremely eclectic mix. As soon as I get up there, I'm seeing that they have exactly what I thought they'd have, which is loads of junk and sort of rubbish, really, that you can't do anything with, but really random bits. What about that Cadbury's box there? Yeah. Would that, can that go? Yeah, it would go. Well, can I, can I buy it? Yes. But then spot a really good uh, Cadbury's chocolates display stand. Now, this would have sat on top of a counter in a shop with all your chocolates in it, advertising, and he said, I'll have one of those and one of those, and they open the back and take them out. They're very, very popular, hugely collectible, and useful as well. OK, so it's a restoration project. <laughs> a little bit of glue, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely a resto project. What, so how much would that cost me today? Shame it's missing. One of the pieces of glass with Cadbury's on is missing. At the turn of the century, this glazed mahogany cabinet would have stood on a sweet shop counter displaying chocolates. With its acid-etched lettering, sliding doors and green baize-covered base, it could be worth around £500. Make me an offer. I've got a figure in mind. Oh, well, that's much easier. Just spit that out and we'll go... 200 150 I'm having a haggle with Nigel. I want to just see on the first deal which way I need to push him. Well, he's a farmer. They, you know, they will. They'll haggle over a fiver and they'll spend all day doing it. 175 160 no. 165. You're getting better. Oh, come on. 170, let's get on. Done. done. Thank, Thank you. you. These little cabinets never hang around long. They're hard to get hold of and they're super popular. A few years ago, I was buying lots and lots of these things. And do you know what? I'll carry on buying them, but they're getting very, very hard to find. What's that one say? Povis Cycle, Cycle House. House. Nice. Never heard of that before. I've never seen a sign. Exactly the same. I've never seen Hovis cycles. Early cycling stuff. Hugely popular. Massively collectible. Anything with cycles on sells well. The enamel sign dates from the early 20th century 
and would have been displayed outside guest houses used by cyclists where the bread was served. It could be worth around 150 pounds. What, what would you take for it? They're worth fair money by the fact that you've said you've never seen one before. This time you make me an offer. Today's going to be long, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Today's going to be Your a long. The sun's day. coming out in a minute. <laughs> right, um, sixty pounds. Cool. I was going to see seventy-five. Seventy. Done. Thank you. The size is great. It's not big. It's not going to go um, into retail or onto another trader. That's for sure. It'll just go to an enthusiast for their, for decoration. Nothing more. Oh, some letters. I always buy these things, but they, they're becoming very, very tricky to sell. Really, really good quality, these ones. They're always the best. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Do we want these two? At least I don't know how many have we got in the ad. Now, these were our, your normal common or garden letters that would go on the front of shops. I'm gambling that there's some words in there. If there's some words in there, we're in the money. If not, I've got a pain in the bum to sell. The set of letters, measuring 22 centimetres in height and made of highly patinated bronze, probably date from the 1930s. As a collection, they could be worth around £250. I thought you said 10 or each. I thought you said 10? 10. 10, 10 or each is probably about right. Don't want to pay any more for them because we don't know what the word is. There's a few bent. Done. Happy. Marvellous, thank you very much. If I buy ten letters and can make one or two words out of them, it's much easier. It's one sale or two sales. Instead of ten individual phone calls, ten individual invoices, ten individual payments, one or two payments. Much easier, much quicker. Get them down the road, get them sold, on to the next one. There are many different collections here, including one that is right up Drew Street. Oh, my word. You're joking. <laughs> Look at all this. So, welcome Lovely. to the Hall of Transport. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes, now you're talking. A car for life. That's beautiful. So, did your dad acquire all these? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> wow. Is that a Renault? Yeah. Renault as well. Steber? Oh, no, a Daimler. Yeah. Nobody told me this was here. I thought they would have a couple of clapped out old bangers maybe up on stands somewhere for the kids to play on. What they have in here is it's not rubbish at all. This is really good stuff. Passionate about motor vehicles, John built the collection over four decades. You got a Trabby as well, and Norton's. Ooh, could I can I ask a really strange photo? Can I sit on that one? I haven't sat on one in years. What, can I have a sit on? Yeah, go, go on. Let's, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> got a damper and fork, Springer front end on it. Lovely. Tighten up the suspension on that T. Tightens up your T shocker. Imagine white, though, going to work on one of these. Yes. Fat and fag. Yeah. 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 Yeah, wonderful. <clears throat> it's some really interesting stuff around the back of here. Okay. The things that jumped out at me were the um, pump tops. Okay. These globes are very, very collectible. They really are. And there's one in there that I think is a little bit more interesting than the rest, and it is the Super Shell in blue. So I think it's interesting because it's Super Shell. It's not just normal Shell petrol. It would have been a higher octane rating. Illuminated glass globes carrying brand names would have topped each petrol pump on station forecourts before being phased out after the advent of self-service in the 1970s. This blue one promoting Super Shell dates from the 1930s and could be worth around £500. So what do you want for that one? It's, it's going to be down to Nigel, I'm afraid, for the, for the price. I reckon two fifty. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is at a holiday attraction in Devon, where the Lee family has been displaying their collection of vintage cars since the 1970s. Current owner Nigel Lee is driving a hard bargain over a vintage petrol pump globe. I reckon 250. Mm. I was thinking 200. Want a bit more than that? We're not far apart. Well, 50 quid. Do you want to split it? If I have to. Don't have to. You're the Two. boss. <laughs> yeah. 240. Done. Marvellous. Thank you. Never seen a blue one. Is that right? Never seen one. No pressure, T. No? Don't break that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm really hoping is that I've found something a little bit rarer than the norm, but I'm not sure. I've not seen one. I've seen lots of stuff, and I've not seen one of those, so fingers crossed. Drew's hopes of getting superior items from this collection have so far paid off. 
If the shell sign is as rare as he thinks, it could be a good earner for him. And now something else in the vintage automobilia collection sends his temperature soaring. How big is that the thermometer there? Oh, he goes all the way up to 140. What do you want for it? The more I look at it, the more I like it. That is a downside for you. The thermometer made of tin over a wooden base would have been on display on a petrol station forecourt, prompting customers to think about buying antifreeze. Dating from the 1950s, it could be worth around £250. This one's really nice. It's the first paint, never been restored, and it's still got the glass up the centre. It's not too big, and it's got no advertising on it. It's really nice and simple and plain, and that's what I like about it. I like it an awful lot. Make me an offer. Tricky one. No, go on, it's yours. You know your prices. You've been pretty much within 30% on all of them so far. 30% on loads, side because you've been buying most of it. But I've still got to make a profit. I'm going to... You wouldn't begrudge me a profit, would you? No. No. I might on this, because I quite like it. I'm going to go 120. Sold. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to places like this is essential for me because it does fuel the business and gives us lots of really random, odd things that you wouldn't expect to find. I've seen thousands of these globes. They're hugely collectible. That one I can't remember seeing, so maybe we're going to get lucky. One thing I know we're going to turn a profit on is the Cadbury's cabinet. These cabinets tend to always go into private collections for people to put their own collections in. One of the other things that I really enjoyed buying today is the little round Hovis cycle sign. A really interesting find, you know, and that, with an interesting history behind it. The little bronze letters, we bought them fairly cheaply, £10 a piece, hoping that there's some words in there and then we will see a good profit. The thermometer, I think, was the buy of the day. It is big enough to be interesting, completely unrestored. We had a good bit of fun, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Sold a few things. I hope I was right on the price, but I'm sure Drew and T will uh, <laughs> make a few quid, which is fine. That was fun. It was great. Yeah. What a cool place. The thermometer is going to be the one that makes the most quick and easy money, if I can be parted from it.
covered base, it could be worth around £500. Make me an offer. I've got a figure in mind. Oh, well, that's much easier. Just spit that out and we'll go... 200 150 I'm having a haggle with Nigel. I want to just see on the first deal which way I need to push him. Well, he's a farmer. They, you know, they will. They'll haggle over a fiver and they'll spend all day doing it. 175. 160. No. 165. You're getting better. Oh, come on. 170, let's get on. Get on, done. Then. done. Thank, Thank you. you. These little cabinets never hang around long. They're hard to get hold of and they're super popular. A few years ago, I was buying lots and lots of these things. And do you know what? I'll carry on buying them, but they're getting very, very hard to find. What's that one say? Povis Cycle, Cycle House. House. Goodness. Never heard of that before. I've never seen a sign exactly the same. I've never seen Hovis Cycles. Early cycling stuff. Hugely popular. Massively collectible. Anything with cycles on sells well. The enamel sign dates from the early 20th century and would have been displayed outside guest houses used by cyclists where the bread was served. It could be worth around £150. What, what would you take for it? They're worth fair money by the fact that you've said you've never seen one before. This time, you make me an offer. Today's going to be long, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Today's going to be a long The sun's day. coming out in a minute. <laughs> right, um, £60. Cool, I was going to see 75 70 Done. Thank you. The size is great. It's not big. It's not going to go um, into retail or onto another trade.